with reports of a CM Punk return to AEW, is he infecting the company? Let's talk about that in today's Wrestling Ramble. If you've been keeping up with the headlines, with the news, the rumors, the reports, all that good stuff, you're probably aware that to some degree, CM Punk returning to AEW is in the works. That's more than likely from the latest reports going to happen. When is that going to take place? We don't have that confirmed yet. And it's going to be probably one of those situations where we wait and see. We may get more details as time goes on. And as we get closer and closer to the date they have in mind, maybe we'll get inklings of reports as to when it could take place. Maybe a week out, a couple weeks out, and we'll have an idea. Oh, it's going to be at this pay-per-view or this dynamite, whatever the case may be. But there is a lot to talk about and a lot to discuss with CM Punk possibly returning to AEW. I I'd imagine that a lot of people are mixed emotion about this. They don't know how to feel. Some people probably either feel one way or the other. They're completely on board with it, or they might be against it given everything that happened with the all-out brawl between Punk A Steel, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks backstage, all of them subsequently getting suspended, stripped of their titles. There's a lot to talk about here, to say the least. But one thing I wanted to get into was kind of the topic of this video in terms of how we feel about CM Punk as a whole. Now, if you've heard some people speak about Punk is running AEW, what's gone on recently, you probably know that there's some people that aren't big fans of him. Some are, just like how the fan base is. So on Strictly Business, former WCW president Eric Bischoff was asked about Punk possibly making his return to AEW. He said this, don't give a F, who cares? This is just such drama for the sake of drama. It's a good thing that this drama is actually taking place because there's nothing worthwhile watching AEW. It is what it is. And if you're a fan of AEW, God bless you. Go with God. Enjoy the product. But it's flat. It's boring. There's nothing going on except for the drama outside of the ring. If Tony Khan had the ability to somehow manufacture a fraction, a small fraction, an infinitesimal amount of the drama that's taking place outside his company and figure out a way to integrate it inside his television product, it would be another situation, but it's not. When the drama outside of your company far exceeds the drama that you're able to create inside your company, if you're a scripted wrestling company, you've got a problem. And I think this is indicative of a much bigger problem. Now with the current brain trust involved in creative at AEW, I don't that would take imagination and cooperation. That's the other thing. Because I'm not involved, I don't have a dog in the hunt. I really don't give two sh** whether CM Punk goes back to AEW or not. It's not going to affect my life one way or the other. But if I did care, which I don't, I would have to ask myself, how honest is CM Punk about coming back? How willing is CM Punk to mend the fences that were torn down not that long ago? If I were the type of person to give CM Punk the benefit of the doubt, if you were to wake up one day and say, you know what, this is kind of a messed up situation. This is not the way I wanted to go out of the industry. I think I want to come back. Would the first thing you expect him to do be to bury Chris Jericho and to continue to bury other members of AEW, which is what he did just a week or two? So how sincere, how honest is he about making amends and making things work? It's stupid. The people involved are equally as stupid for engaging in this, knowing that the outcome is going to be pretty much the same as it's been. I know I wouldn't take the risk of getting into the mud with this guy again. He's a proven commodity and it's not somebody that I'd want to be in business with. If I was Tony Khan, I'd just eat the whatever it is, however many millions of dollars a year he's paying. Just pay the cat off and chalk it up as a learning experience. You're going to keep learning one way or the other. You're either going to pay this cat off and learn a hard lesson and move on with your life or you're going to let this festering wound continue to infect the rest of your business going forward and you're still paying him. I don't get it. So there are Bischoff's comments about a reported CM Punk return to AEW. And I really want to know what you guys think about this. Is Punk infecting AEW? And is it entirely Punk's fault? Even if you want to blame CM Punk for the all-out brawl, for the backstage drama that's been seen in the company, is it entirely his fault? Because I would say no. You can't put all the blame on Punk. And I feel like a lot of people want to do that for whatever reason. I guess because they feel 
feel that there weren't too many backstage fights before Punk came in. When did Guevara and Andrade fight? Was that before or after? But nevertheless, it's pretty clear that there's blame to go around. You can blame Punk, you can blame Ace Steel, you can blame the Bucks, you can blame Omega, and you can blame Tony Khan. It was a perfect storm, shall we say, for that to come together. And maybe you can put some blame on Hangman Page too. Because in reality, that's what kicked it off. Hangman going off script. And that's why I say maybe you can put some of the blame on Tony Khan as the AEW president. Because he really should have gotten this under control. He could have simply suspended Hangman Page. I think the Wrestling Observer talked about this. Saying if they had essentially nipped this in the bud with Hangman Page, then maybe it wouldn't have festered and gotten as bad as it did. But moving on, I also wanted to cover some more comments from Bischoff. I thought this was particularly particularly funny. He also said this on Strictly Business about AEW's upcoming event in Wembley. He said, I think Wembley's going to do great with or without Punk. I would prefer if I was Tony Khan to do it without Punk because that makes a real statement, right? Who drew the house? Did AEW draw the house or did CM Punk draw the house? I would absolutely not book Punk on that show, even though I would know that doing so would ensure more sales. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't sell my soul to that piece of garbage. Book CM Punk and Bill Goldberg. You want to book something that's going to sell at Wembley? Book that. Bill Goldberg's last match against CM Punk. Dare you. Dare you. Grab your balls, TK. <laughs> this one really, when I first read it, got a good chuckle out of me as it did, again, rereading it. Because you start out with Eric Bischoff saying, yeah, I wouldn't book CM Punk. But if I did, I would take probably the hottest free agent of pro wrestling. Can we say that about Goldberg? I think that's a fair assessment. Who else is a bigger star than Goldberg that's a free agent right now? If you got a name, let me know. I'd love to hear it. And we can debate about that possibly. But I don't think we can. I think Goldberg's the biggest star right now that is not signed to a major promotion. And AEW picking him up would be a good get, especially if they're thinking about simply just giving him a retirement match or maybe a little three-match series, give him a couple matches on Dynamite to boost the ratings for television, and then give him a good pay-per-view match and a send-off. But it's just interesting that Bischoff says, why well, wouldn't book Punk? I would pay him to not show up. But if I was to book him, <laughs> I'd put him against Goldberg. That almost seems like it's out of spite, but in all seriousness, it's not a bad idea. I think people would pay to see that match. Would it be a good one? I have no idea. I would lean towards no, but maybe Punk can get something out of Goldberg. I'm just not sure what you do with that. Does Goldberg want to lose his last match? Does he want to lose to Punk? I think people have floated the idea of Goldberg and Jericho, given Jericho's still in the business, and he's like the only one still actively competing from Goldberg's time, and then they had their history with WCW, even though it's really not that relevant, but that's about all you've got to work with storyline wise for Goldberg but going off on a tangent about that so be sure to let me know what you guys think about Bischoff's comments do you think Punk is infecting AEW is it a problem with Punk and only Punk or is it a problem overall that Punk could be playing a factor in I lean towards the latter but I want to hear from you guys I don't think Punk's entirely innocent here but to put all the blame on him I think is a bit nonsensical so in terms of what could be next for CM Punk Andrew Zarian went on Wrestling Observer Live, and he had said that Punk wants to return to AEW, he wants to make it work, he's willing to work with the Elite, and if you'll recall, Dax Harwood went on his FTR podcast and mentioned how he wanted to do an angle between CM Punk and FTR and the Elite, which really, that would be a great program to get interest, and that's something that Bischoff was talking about. You've got all this drama outside the company, well really, it's inside the company, it's not on TV, it's backstage, why don't you bring it to the outside? That's what would really put some vested interest into this because the problem with pro wrestling today is most people are in on it to some degree. They know that, oh, these guys are actually friends. I saw their vlog right after the match. These guys are actually cool with one another, which granted can make for some great programs. If they are friends, they're more likely to hit each other harder and be a little more rough in the ring. But if fans know going in, because we, we know that CM Punk, FTR, Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega, they all really don't get along. They have ideological, philosophical, all these differences. And they butted heads. And with Punk and the Elite, they've actually fought. And then when the Elite came back, they made fun of the situation with the biting. And they made fun of Punk and his ankle injury and messing up the buckshot lariat. All that stuff. They 
made fun of it on screen on tv so it's not above them to not mention it on television it's not above them to mention it whenever they're doing the all access show or whatever it may be so why can't we put differences aside to go make some money if i was tony khan that's what i'd want to do i'd say boys we're gonna come into a room we're gonna hash this out whoever doesn't want to work you can just get out just threaten them because if punk's willing to go ftr's willing to do it just threaten the bucks say listen if you guys don't want to work that's fine but i'm not re-signing you i'll actually pay you to get off television now i don't know if i'd go that far i don't know if i'd go with the latter <laughs> scenario of just paying them to leave but tony khan has got to put his foot down and i just don't think he has now in terms of what could be next for punk andrew zarian said a wrestling observer live the way it was alluded to me is that the program will probably be punk and jericho in some capacity i don't know if ftr is involved or the jericho appreciation society is involved jericho is willing to make this work and that's a good assumption to operate on, given what we just talked about with the desired feud being the Elite and CM Punk FTR. This gives something for FTR to do, and it gives something for Jericho's faction to do. Like, what is Jericho's faction going to do? Just not be involved? Oh yeah, we'll just stay in the back the entire time that you're dealing with Punk. Come on, they're going to be involved. You would at least think. So I feel like that should be the course of action for AEW, is if we can't, which they should be able to. Let's just be realistic here. They should be able to put together CM Punk FTR and the Elite. They should be able to get that done. But if not, which may be the more likely scenario, unfortunately for them and everybody else, then you've got CM Punk FTR against the Jericho Appreciation Society. And at the very least, you've got real heat between Jericho and CM Punk. Of course, Jericho had mentioned in response to a fan asking him, he had posted a picture of Jericho and Punk and said, hey, I heard you're willing to work with everybody. Everyone's saying that you aren't willing to work with people. That's not true, right? And Jericho was like, no, not everyone, insinuating that he doesn't want to work with CM Punk. And then he posted on Instagram, you want to F around, and the geolocation was Chicago. So it looks like they've already got some kind of build there. And thankfully, at the very least, even though this is the second option for a preferred feud in AEW, CM Punk FTR and the Jericho Appreciation Society, of course, we'd rather want the elite in that spot. But if this is what we get, at least there is some backstage drama. Of course, Jericho reportedly called punk a cancer punk has responded and you've got this little back and forth and this dialogue going on online but what do you guys think what do you think about bischoff's comments and what do you think about the potential feud between cm punk and ftr and the jericho appreciation society or just simply cm punk and chris jericho i'd love to hear from you let me know what you guys think in the comments that's all i've got i'll see y'all later